Hey there, welcome to the Eurostep Podcast Network YouTube channel. I'm Ty Windish, one of the hosts of the Eurostep, and wanted to take a minute today to bring you all something that I've been focusing on all series, really impressed with, a little upset it's not being talked about more, the way Wes Matthews is defending Jason Tatum. And it's the Bucks as a whole, it's not just Wes, but I want to highlight Wes, who doesn't really get the acclaim of someone like Drew Holiday, or obviously Giannis, or even Brooke Lopez, I think. And while the other end, I think guys like Grant Williams and Al Horford have gotten a lot of buzz for how they defended Giannis, rightfully so. Games one and two, they were tremendous. Game three, he figured them out a bit, but that'll happen. But Wes has really done great work in holding down Jason Tatum in both Bucks wins. He's instrumental to Milwaukee's defense, basically filling that P.J. Tucker role. So I just isolated some possessions over the series so far, Milwaukee versus Boston, that I think really encapsulate how well Wes has defended Tatum without fouling, but also not making it easy for him to really get in a rhythm. So I'm going to get to that. We're going to highlight the physicality. It's great stuff, hopefully. But first, I just want to say quickly, if you are not already subscribed to the Eurostep Podcast Network, which, based on the performance of our last few videos, you're probably not. We keep getting more views than subs, which is great. We love that a lot of people are watching and enjoying the content. But please take a minute, help us out, hit that subscribe button. We just passed 900. We're going for 1,000. I promise we'll be a bit less annoying once we get to 1,000. That's when we can monetize. So help us secure the bag, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to. I don't know where I'm pointing, but here's the video. Wes Matthews, defensive masterclass. Enjoy. Good luck. Wes in the post that far from the basket. It's good luck. You're not moving him. I love the swipe. He's so good while not fouling at keeping that ball pressure on. And, you know, that that big dribble, if you bring it up too loose, too far away from your body... That ball is gone, but he does it in a way it's not going to get called for a foul. It's so outside of the shooter, and he still manages to get the hand up after. There's the swipe. Again, It's Tatum has the ball in the right spot. If, if you're a little sloppy with that turnaround, you're not coming up with the ball. We've seen West do this to a lot of players. And then, oh, did not mean a full screen. And then, you know, is, is he really getting up high enough to truly contest this? You might think no, just because Tatum is so much taller and longer than West. But just that physicality, that being in your chest, it's the same thing that P.J. Tucker was able to do to Kevin Durant. It takes a toll over several games. And he still, honestly, gets gets up there pretty good. It's not a totally clean look. It's a fadeaway anyway. And it's just, you just get worn down from dealing with Wes for the whole game, for the whole series. And that toll is shown now on Tatum twice. This is classic Wes here. Strong closeout, but very in control. Probably Tatum probably has a second there, literally one second to get a shot up, but doesn't. It kind of a kind of catches it low in a way. And this can be a spot where it's easy for especially a star like Tatum at home in TD Garden to get some free throws here by kind of falling out of bounds, you know, exaggerate a little bit of contact. Official right here, you're likely to get that call. Wes just does not let you pick up easy fouls. I mean, he's not giving you any ground. Hand up right here. Like, hey, legal guarding position. Probably fishing a little bit for the ball with the left hand, but certainly not not getting overextended, not losing his ground. I mean, if you go, you're going to have to go baseline. And look, it, you, you don't want to go baseline. And I think Wes knows that he's got Giannis behind him. He's got the baseline to help him defend. He's saying, you're not going to go this way. If you go this way, you're going right into Giannis. Tatum has been driven into Lopez and Giannis so often in this series. He doesn't want to do that. So what does Tatum do? He says, all right, I can get this three-pointer up. It won't be a great shot, but, you know, all I have to do is sell a little bit of contact, and that's three free throws. That's a lot better than driving into this. Wes just won't give it to him. And this is just classic Wes Matthews. My feet are planted. I'm not going to jump with the shot. My arms are literally behind me. Like, you're not getting this call. There is no universe where this is a shooting foul. You've got to make the shot, and he doesn't. It's it's an air ball, and Tatum's on the ground. So this turns into a fast break, too. And that's just classic Wes Matthews. Strong defense, and I think the thing he does best, maybe, just won't foul. You really, it, It's rare for him to pick up too many shooting fouls or, or fouls general because he just doesn't. I mean, this is just beautiful textbook. He knows his personnel. He knows his scheme. He knows where. If Tatum drives, he's going to allow him to go. And he knows he's not giving him the three freebies. It's great defense. 
this is how you have to guard guys like Jason Tatum. The physicality starts before he gets the ball. This is how you wear down a guy and have him start two for 12 or whatever in in a game three of a series when every single possession, it's not just West. I mean, Drew Holiday is picking up great shifts. Now George Hill is checking in. But as soon as he goes to get involved in this action, nothing free, nothing easy. I'm sticking with you. You're not getting any separation. He does get the successful push off there. That really should have been called. Uh, and that might just be frustration. I mean, we saw him get away with a couple of these and get called for a couple of these in game three, or at least over the last two games. But that's because there's no other way for him to get any room. Wes is always right here, and he's not been able to get around him. you got to resort to that. I mean, that's something the Bucks I know, have made some noise with the NBA officials about. That We might see that called more in game four if Tatum continues to do it. And, I, you know, I get where he's coming from. This looks frustrating as hell. But that's just great defense. He's gonna Wes is gonna be a pest. He's gonna hold his ground when he doesn't get off arm shoved, and he's gonna frustrate guys. He's done it to Tatum really well. Two out of the three games so far. Little half screen here from Al Horford. It it does not it does not accomplish anything. I mean I know Horford's kind of popping out here to the perimeter. Maybe that's the the reasoning. But Wes is around him before it starts. Gets shook a little bit, but he's right back. Look, it stays with the spin. Another off-arm shove. You can see Wes is upset. Drew is upset. This is what Tatum had to resort to late in game three because he just could not get separation. I mean, look at this. He's right with him. He's right. He's still right with him, honestly, even through the shove because Wes is so strong. But the, the little screen doesn't help. All the dribble moves, all the spins, he does not get anything until he has to push with the off-arm. And then Giannis is there to help anyway. But, I mean, just from start till finish here, I mean, he just never, ever gets away from him. He, has, he does have a little bit there, I will say. But in terms of the drive, there's just nothing. And, and that, again, is, is Wes holding his ground and, and making guys hit shots. Al Horford doesn't want to shoot when he doesn't have to. So he gives it back to Tatum here. And, again, it's just like you're going to get a somewhat open look, but there's going to be a hand there, and you're not going to draw the foul. You just won't. He's right there. He gets him out of it once. Again, he's containing the drives really well without needing too much help. And it's just, it's sound. I mean, you can get beaten playing defense like this. You know, the guys can hit the shots. You're not, I think Drew maybe clamps more when he's defending players in terms of, you know, maybe you won't even get the shot off at all. West, though, is just so sound. He's just like, you know, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to beat me. I'm not going to beat myself. And it turns out not that many guys can beat him that consistently.